see was bitten on her ring finger by a teensy orange spider hiding inside a washed and ready-to-eat packet of sliced courgettes imported from Kenya. The finger swelled and tightened. How could the epidermis stretch so far without tearing apart? But the real problem was in her toes. Pretty soon, she lost all feeling in her feet and dropped to the floor. And moment by moment, the numbness increased as if molten lead were flowing through her veins to her lower limbs. However, her mind remained clear. And with great foresight, she thumped the leg of the kitchen table with the outside of her fist, causing the telephone handset to jump from the docking station and fall safely into the hairy tartan blanket in the wicker dog basket. She called her brother, Sandy. Sandy's voice said, Hi, I'm at the golf course. Leave a message. She called her mother. Her mother said, Forget the spider. Where's that pastry brush I lent you? And the silver candlesticks you borrowed to impress that boss of yours at one of your fancy pants dinner parties. Where will it all end, see? It'll be the melon baller next then the ice cream scoop, and soon I'll have nothing. Do you hear me? Nothing. God knows I didn't bring you up to be a thief, but you have a problem with honesty, see? You really do. Did you find the man yet? Now leave me alone. I can hear the nurse coming. C's dog padded over and licked her chin, then went back into the living room to watch daytime TV. C lay on the tiles on the kitchen floor for a few cold, quiet minutes, considering the ever after. Then with a good hand, she punched a long, random number into the keypad, 11 or 12 digits. After a lot of clicking and crackling, it rang. Who is this? Said a man. My name's C, and I'm dying from a spider bite. She said and described the incident with the insect and the pre-packed salad vegetables. The man said, I'm dying too. I've been adrift in an inflated inner tube in the Indian Ocean for six days now, and the end is near. I think a shark took my leg, but I dare not look. Why don't you call for help? She asked. Why don't you? He replied. His name was Dean. They chatted for a while, not caring a hoot about the cost of premium rate international calls during peak periods. Is it dark there? C wanted to know. Yes. Are you married? Asked Dean. C replied. I've had no luck with men, even though I'm a lovely person and I've taken good care of my body. What's your best feature? My laugh, said C, <laughs> laughing. And my lips, which have never received the attention they deserve. The poison had reached as far as her windpipe and was tightening around her throat. Dean said, Do you think we could have made it together? I think so, she whispered. I don't like courgettes. Dean joked, and those were his last words. I would have done broccoli, she breathed. Or even cauliflower. Whatever you asked for, I would have made. <laughs> there was a horrible pause as we sat there wondering whether or not to applaud. Then the curtains closed. <laughs> 